Oh my god! Hey everybody, my name is Hamster and I am excited because Easy Muse 2.0 is in the Xbox Live Marketplace in the Indie Game section. You can go there and you can buy it now. And if for some reason it's not showing up there in your area, then go to the Xbox site because it is there. I've put a link to that in the description. I figured I should probably show you how to use this since it is new and the controls are a bit different than the previous Easy Muse. First and foremost, there is a mode selector menu. You hit RB and it brings this thing up, which lets you get to the sequencer, the mixer, the automation, and the trigger effects. To get into the insert menu, which is where you can browse for different music loops, you double tap the A button. You can also get there by hitting the Y button and picking insert menu, but uh, it's easier just to go tap tap and it opens this up. In here, you can browse with the shoulder buttons, through all the different loops we have available. There's a ton of them. You can see a lot of them are by me, but there are some by other people like Spinor and Big Nick. You can also hit the Y button to bring up a picture of my face. Yeah, let's put down one of these loops here, go to a different category. We'll load up something like, uh, how about that? Do some acid and uh, bring up a bass. Those are just kind of like bass drones. Uh, if you want something like a more articulate bass, there are packs for those, like these ones. You know? Or the funk ones. The mixer, let's show you that real quick. Hitting the D-pad navigates between things, and then using the stick, you can actually change them. Uh, for these, you can also mute and solo in here. Just hitting the A button. And when you solo something and you go back to the sequencer, you can see that the rest are red so that you just hear that one. Which is really useful if you're trying to get a specific sound just the way you want it. In the automation menu, you can hold A and move around and you'll make a selection. You can then hold LB and click on the sticks to do presets, which jump to very specific values or you can use these sticks to move freely but uh yeah if you want to just reset it you click the sticks a couple times and now you've reset it to its default value in here you can also hit lb and then hit one of the colored buttons on the front the face buttons and you'll see that the that the line changes color and at the bottom it says editing low pass each of these face buttons is assigned to a different effect we can make a selection like this and then make it ramp, and then we can even copy this onto the other tracks, like that, by double tapping on X. X is your paste menu. If you hit it once, it'll bring up a menu, and if you double tap it, it'll just do a quick paste. Yeah, see? Low pass. There's a little bit of filtering, and that's pretty awesome. You can change that from low pass to a high pass, which cuts out the bass and leaves only the high end so I'm going to go into the automation again, and I'm going to go back to volume, which is green. Now in here, you can hit Y and it brings up a preset menu. And in here, you can pick all sorts of different waveforms. And in these, left and right chooses how fast it goes. So one of my favorites here is Transgate 7, which is just a nice choppy pattern. If you hold LB and you move the sticks, what you're changing is the value. And then if you hold LT and move the sticks, what you change is the amplitude. So you can see it makes it bigger overall or it makes it smaller overall. Play this so you can hear what that sounds like. Yeah, see, so it's all kind of stuttery like that. But that's the way that you could do stuttering stuff in the previous Easy Muse. With the new one, we now have a trigger effect system. I'll bring that up here. And uh, with this, each of the face buttons brings up a different set of effects. Green brings up these ones, which are like different ways of chopping and rearranging the loops. Blue brings up the pitch based effects, turntable effects and pitch doubling and, and stuff like that. Uh, and it also does reversing. And then yellow brings up specific pitching, which if you just want to take an entire loop and make it two semitones higher, you go in here and you do pitch up two. So I'm going to tell it to do slice one, which 
We'll make it repeat this first slice over and over again. All right, so we got it repeating that first slice. And in repeating that first slice, I am now going to use the second effect slot, which is once you place an effect down, if you hit down, you can see the little arrow there moves to the bottom, and you can put another one so you can stack them. You can do retrigger two, retrigger four, retrigger eight. And so here we got it, no retrigger, then two, four, eight. And that sounds pretty cool. So you can do stuff like that now. You have stuff like tape stops, slow down, turntable things. This should give you an idea, at least how they sound. So there, yeah. That's something. And uh, with that, you can do all kinds of nonsense. You can chop up the loops all crazy. You combine that with the automation and you can do, you know, filters. You can do bit crush. You can do volume. You can mine that all these things together and you've got some hardcore nonsense going on. Oh, lastly, if you want to make Easy Muse 2.0 run better, in the options here, you go to the menu and you go down to options. It says complete install. What this does is it takes everything out of its super compressed state and just puts it on the hard drive and that makes it run a lot faster. It's still perfectly usable in its compressed state, but this makes it better. So definitely run the complete install. It takes about an hour to run because there are a ton of loops and yeah, it's just a crazy process that it has to do. And uh, that's it. I'm Hamster, send me some Easy Muse 2.0 songs, and I'll see you later. <laughs>